In order to process clearance requests, Clear it requires that all customers execute a power of attorney. This is a legal document that allows Clearit to transact with the U.S. Customs on their client's behalf without the need for your physical signature every step of the way. Without it, it would be very cumbersome to provide our services. Depending on your company structure, the power of attorney requires one to three signatures, which we collect digitally. The guarantor is the user who initiates the document and is always the first to sign. The guarantor is the person granting clear at the authorization to act on their behalf. Typically, this is the account owner, but in some cases it may not be. For example, the person initiating the power of attorney might be a personal assistant or a colleague of the actual guarantor. When a user first enters the power of attorney screen, the first data point collected is the signer or guarantor information, which consists of their name, company name, and contact information. This data is used to initially populate the power of attorney. For the convenience of users who are the actual guarantors, a checkbox is also provided that when selected, will pre-fill all of the fields with the information from the user's profile. So we're looking at the screen right now. I've come in, I have a blank, uh, a blank form to start with. I can click the same as user checkbox and what will happen is it will collapse the form to save some real estate on the screen. But if I expand it, I will see that it filled in all of the information from my profile. Now, all power of attorneys require a witness. Some will require both a witness and a cosigner depending upon how you've set your account up. So for example, in this situation, if I go over to my account details, we can see that I've set up as a corporation and I'm the single signing officer. So all that's required is just my signature and a witness. If I had designated my corporate structure and that I was a co-signing officer, then the form would require that I supply both another officer's contact information and a witness's contact information to collect two signatures. So let's go back to the form and step through the actual process. So I'm gonna go back to the power of attorney form. I'll click same as user so I don't have to type all that data in. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in just who my witness is. And I'll put an email address in. Once this is done, I'm gonna click next step. Now, before I do that, let me tell you what's gonna happen. When I click next step, it's going to take me to the digital form for me to sign. And then upon completion of that, it's going to send an email to this email address, letting the witness know that a power of attorney has been initiated and that my signature is required. So I'm gonna take you through that right now. I'm gonna click next step. And we're gonna give this a couple of seconds to load. Okay, so when the form first loads, you'll see that a lot of information is carried over from my account and pre-filled into the document so that none of it has to be re-entered. And the only thing that's really required from me are three fields. One is to supply a date. That's the date that I'm signing the document. The second is to designate what my role is within the company. And the last is to provide my actual signature, which I simply go into this box and I could type my signature, not type, actually use my mouse and draw my signature. And when complete, just hit the submit signature button. The page will then reload and will show me the status of my power of attorney. We can see that I initiated and signed it at 1016. The witness has not signed yet. So if I look in the inbox of the email address that I used here for this demonstration, you'll see that I have an email sitting waiting for me. And this is letting me know that my signature has been requested as a witness for a power of attorney executed by, and it'll give the guarantor's name. All I have to do is click this link as the witness. I'll be taken to the exact same form. All of the guarantor's information is already filled in there. And all I need to do as a witness is sign. So I click on the signature box. I sign, hit submit signature. And that is it. The process is done. It tells me that the power of attorney is signed. If I go back to the, uh, the user screen and I refresh it now, what you'll see is that the power of attorney has been fully executed. 
it gives you the time that the witness signed it. And now the document is available. I can click on this button and I can even download a copy of the PDF of the document that I just signed to my own computer if I like. That's pretty much all there is to it, except for one other useful feature. I'm going to go back here to my power of attorney screen. Let's say a mistake was made. I sent the email for the witness to the wrong address. I put the wrong name in, or I wanted to use a different witness because I didn't realize that my witness was on vacation. You do have the ability to reboot all this process and start over from scratch. Next to the guarantor's name, all you need to do is click the start over button. If I do that, it will wipe away the power of attorney that was just completed, and I'll be back on the form from scratch as if the power of attorney was never even initiated, and I can start the entire process over from scratch using different people or correct or different information.